So one of the first decisions we're going to have to make is what toy to use for our dog when we play tug. Uh, different, there are a wide variety of different sizes, shapes, uh, textures, surfaces, hardnesses of tugs uh, available to use for your dog. And choosing the right toy at the right time uh, is an important part of the puzzle. If we're starting to play with the dog as a young puppy, it's really important that the tug not be too hard for the dog. So initially we choose toys that are big enough to make the dog want to open its mouth, but soft enough to be compressed fully. With young puppies, and by young puppies I mean pre-teething, so up to about four months, we'll play tug with the dogs, but it's primarily with soft, compressible toys. Fleece toys, um, stuffed toys, uh, uh, a leather rag on the end of a string, something like that. We're basically building the beginnings of tugging behavior, but we're not formally tugging so much. And then generally when the toy puppy hits four to six months old and is teething, we back off on our tugging. We don't tug so much during this period. And then the real tug play basically starts with the dog post-teething from six months on. And at this point we need to choose, we start to choose a toy that is what I would call an adult dog toy, uh, a regular tug toy, the type of tug toy that we're going to use uh, in obedience as an obedience reward. We still need to pick a toy that is appropriate for that dog's jaw development, strength, and intensity. So, and there's a wide variety of toys, from fire hose tugs to leather tugs to jute rolls. There's a variety of different kinds of toys. Some are quite firm, some are quite soft. We start out with the softer ones and progress gradually onto harder tugs. I like to vary the tugging surface when I'm playing with my young dogs. So I don't always play with a jute toy or always play with a fire hose toy or always play with a leather toy. Uh, if you play with the same kind of toy all the time with your dog, you get what I call toy bias, where the dog says, I like this surface, but they don't want to transition onto other surfaces. And I prefer to have my dog um, flexible enough to play with almost any kind of toy that I have. So I tend to rotate through different kinds of toys as I play with my dog uh, in the early stages. So I'll use a leather toy one time, I'll use a jute toy another, I'll use a fire hose toy another. Just a variety of tugs so the dog doesn't get a bias on one or the other. So we need to pick a toy that's appropriate in terms of uh, hardness for the dog. We also need to pick a toy that's an appropriate size. Uh, I tend to like to have a tug that's large enough that I can put both my hands on the tug and have enough room between my hands for the dog's mouth. So anywhere from 10 to 14 inches is probably a good place to start. And the reason for this is that I want to be able to control the tug with my hands and still give the dog a good biting surface. So when I'm teaching the dog presentations, uh, I need to be able to put my hands on the tug and give the dog a clear presentation. And when I go to teach the dog to out off the toy, I need to be able to completely immobilize the tug while the dog's learning to out, which means I need to be able to hold the tug in my hands. So if the tug is too small, then I wind up holding onto the handles or the ends and I can't properly control the tug. If the tug is too big, then what winds up happening is it's an ineffectual obedience reward. I want a tug that's small enough that I can stick it in my pocket or the back of my pants and later on use it as an obedience reward. This is probably a good point to talk also about handles on tugs and my feelings about those. Uh, I think that it's almost impossible to buy a tug that doesn't have handles on it. Uh, all the manufacturers make tugs with handles. And the handles come in very handy for an advanced dog, a dog that already knows how to play tug. Uh, it makes it easier for you to hold on to the tug. It makes it easier for you to get your hands out of the way and a variety of things like that. So it's a, it, they're a useful tool. When I'm initially starting to teach my young dog to tug though, I prefer a tug without handles. So I frequently cut the handles off my tugs when I start playing with puppies. And one of the reasons for that is, is that the handles, one, tend to flop around and be attractive for the dog. So when a dog's learning to bite, if I don't keep those handles out of the dog's vision, the dog will tend to start grabbing the handles, which are much easier to bite frequently than the body of the tug itself. And they'll become, they develop bad habits biting the, the handles of the tug. The other is that if I'm holding the handles of the tug, it's almost impossible to immobilize the tug. So when I go to teach outing, if the person's holding onto the handles, then they can't hold the tug still and it's much more difficult to teach the dog to let go of the toy. So for my young dogs, I usually trim the handles off of my tugs while they learn to play tug. And then as they get the rules established and become more advanced 
and more vigorous in their tug play, then I'll use the handles to help me hold on to the tug as we progress.